All right, chapter two, uh, protein. Uh, protein, we get sources from animal products, dairy, eggs, beans, peas, whole grains, and vegetables. Uh, there are amino acids, essential and non-essential amino acids. There are 20 common uh, amino acids. Nine of them are essential and 11 are non-essential. Um, you don't need to know the names of all the amino acids, but what I do want you to know is that the reason why some amino acids are considered essential is that we have to get them from food. Non-essential amino acids means that our bodies can just make them. Okay, so uh, essential amino acids need to come from food. So this is why we need uh, protein in our diet, be it animal sources or vegetable sources. Amino acids are important because they help make enzymes and hormones. They help our bodies to fight infection. They're, as most of you know, maintaining and building cells. So somebody who's an elite athlete or weight trainer, uh, protein is an important nutrient. Probably not as important as they think it is, but it is an important nutrient for building those cells. Also important uh, for periods of rapid growth in someone's life cycle, pregnancy, lactation, infancy, uh, adolescence. And then uh, protein pl plays an important role in uh, fluid balance. It is rather uncommon to have a protein deficiency in the United States. If you would see someone with a protein deficiency, it's most likely related to a, a severe illness, injury, like a burn, or economic factors. Um, when we talk about a protein deficiency, we see muscle wasting, weight loss, or wound healing, lowered immunity, and edema. Um, we throw around the term protein energy malnutrition. We talked about that with the um, BMI. Someone with a BMI of less than 18.4 would be in the protein energy malnutrition category. Now, I want to talk about two different types of protein calorie malnutrition that we most likely likely will not see in the United States, but there is a chance uh, that we could see this. The uh, the two types are quagliocor and marasmus. Now, I'm not going to ask you to spell these, but you need to be able to recognize them on a on an exam. And the reason why we need to differentiate between the difference is marasmus is um, really just overall calorie, macronutrient, micronutrient, malnutrition. So just completely underfed, like you see this little guy here, you see that skin and bones appearance. They just are getting inadequate nutrition all around. Contrast that with quagliocor, which you, you look at these two little guys and you think, well, they don't look like they're malnourished. Look at their big bellies. Um, but this term quagliocor actually comes from a Ghana uh, word that means sickness that infects the first child when the second child is born. So as you can picture, um, if a child is being nursed or breastfed from the mom and the mother has another child, that first child is weaned off the breast. And basically that breast milk is a perfect food with the exception of um, vitamin D. Otherwise, all the nutrients that baby needs to grow and flourish, but once they're weaned off that breast, they're put on a lower protein type of formula or type of um, meal. And they're getting adequate calories, but inadequate protein. Okay? It typically happens around 18 months to two years of age, again, when they're weaned off the breast. And this quagliore core causes this pro protruding abdomen. And the reason is, is because the liver swells with stored fat because there's lack of proteins that are synthesized to form and release lipoproteins, which are carriers of fat. Okay, so basically that fat stays in the liver and is, is causing that swelling belly or that protruding belly. We also talked about how liver, or excuse me, how protein, um, aids in fluid, in fluid balance, and a lack of protein causes fluid to leak into interstitial spaces. So picture somebody with really swollen ankles or really swollen 